Hi everyone, let's just make sure that everything's working. Um, so when this uh, switches on, can someone just give me a heads up on the chat? That'd be great. A lot to cover today. Um, so I want to really uh, jump straight into it, but I'll do a bit of an intro first before, before we do so. So just give someone give me a thumbs up uh, on the on the chat just to make sure we're all we're all good to go, and uh, and and then we'll kick off. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much for all for coming. We had uh, had a huge response uh, to this uh, to this workshop, um, which is, which is great. Um, they keep growing and growing and growing. Um, which is just absolutely fantastic. Obviously, yeah. You know, there's uh, there is. Um, it, there's a there's a need there's a need to go into um, you know a lot of the stuff that I like uh, like touching on so so I'm glad that um, that the response is positive about that. So we had over about 500 registrations so you know um, that's um, that's that, that's a crazy amount um, you know based on what it was almost a year ago so I'm really 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 pleased with that. Now. Uh, just if you don't know me, uh, I know a lot of you are pretty new to um, Enterprise DNA who have registered for this, this event. My name is Sam McKay. I'm the founder of Enterprise DNA. Uh, and my uh, really my focus is on empowering uh, users and organizations to use Power BI effectively. So I, I really come at things in a, un with a, in a unique way where I'm, I'm you know, very much focused on the analytics part of using Power BI, how you can generate really, really uh, powerful insights that actually matter. Uh, you know that will actually create value and and, um, and make a difference to your decision making. Uh, so this webinar or this workshop is is is, is certainly all about that. Um, it is it is on a very I guess unique or or, or niche t topic or, or area of analysis, but a really powerful one. And uh, that's why I, I I guess I came up with it because I thought there is so many applications for this particular type of analysis across anything any any type of scenario any any type of data you can you can implement a lot of the techniques that we're going to go into today so um so i'm, I'm pretty excited about showing you some of my um sh some of my ideas around how you can do it and then and then really um hope, i'm hoping that you can find ways to apply these techniques um check the resource and and, um, and utilize the resource that i that i'll hand out in the future um, so that you can actually uh, implement a lot of the techniques that I run through. So I think that's about it. I, I do want I do want to jump. In. I guess one thing I will say is that this this session is quite advanced. Okay, and and I like to go through quite advanced techniques in my in my workshops for a couple of reasons. One because from a personal perspective, I get uh, I, I like talking about you know things that actually are, are really valuable and, and actually going to make a difference. So you know just creating a dashboard or or showing you how to use simple things in Power BI. To be honest, I get a bit bored doing that, so I, I um, um, and so I, I direct you to the free stuff I put out there. So the ultimate beginner's guide to Power BI, the ultimate beginner's guide to DAX. If you want to, uh, if you're just starting out with Power BI and you want to learn uh, that uh, how, how to get going and all the key concepts, then then certainly utilize that free content because it's all packaged in there. And with these sessions, I like to go for advanced things. So um, really to inspire you about what you can achieve because Power BI is an absolutely incredible analytical tool. There is, uh, I, I just don't think there's anything better out there, especially from a uh, cost perspective, you know, just, you know, from a, such a trivial cost, you can do amazing things with Power BI. So um, I will monitor the chat as we go. What I what I do always say is try and uh, keep your questions very on topic. Okay, I'm not going to um, veer off into any um, random direction around questions until the end, where I'll open it up and we can ask people questions on on various different things. Uh, let's let's yeah. So let's let's stay on topic while I'm while I'm going through for for about the next half an hour. I don't like to go for too much longer than that. And then post that point, uh, we can talk about anything to do with the techniques I run through, anything to do with the solution, or you, we can branch out into, into into other things. I'll just have to gauge how long it might take to describe the um, the concept that you, that you that you might be asking about. Okay, so how does that sound? Um, let me know in the chat. Uh, any any questions first up before I jump into it? Uh, let me know, uh, and I can um, I can look to answer answer those. But if not. I'm, I'm going to wrap up wrap up the intro and, and just jump in and show you some of these really really amazing analytical techniques that I want to get through. Okay, cool. So I've uh, got here. Davinda is 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 hearing an echo, um, but uh, most others are not. So all I, look, I don't know. I don't know what that could be. 
um, just maybe just check your sound settings, I guess, um, or if you've got two two sounds coming from different um, parts of your computer, I'm, I'm just not sure. Okay, so let's jump into it. I'm going to switch over to my screen. We're going to walk through the solution. You will get a replay of this uh, session, and you will get to hold the resource. I, I always like to hand those out, so don't worry if not everything sinks in initially, because I'm yeah I'm relatively confident it won't, because there are some quite advanced topics that I'm going to go over. But um, but you know the idea is to get exposure to them, see what you can do, and then utilize the replay and the resource at a later point, you know, to to go over it if you want to implement something like this in your own data. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to switch over now. Okay, so just bear with me one second. That is not, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen here. Just bear with me. Okay, cool. So, sorry, I, I went into the wrong screen there. Now, you should be seeing my resource here, right? Okay, so remember, this uh, this this session is all about outliers, okay? Outliers, either positive, they could be positive, they could be negative. Um, they, they, it is just all about trying to break out a subset of your data and then evaluate him or running analysis over that subset, okay? That's the key thing. That's the key thing about this outlier detection and, and showcasing is how can we you know, calculate some results and then break out a portion of those results and then start analyzing all the great things about those particular results. Because what you'll find in a, a lot of you know, data sets or organizations is the outliers which are going to uh, create the the largest impact, right? You know, have you have you heard of the Pareto rule? They always say, say twenty percent of your customers or products or something like that are going to uh, determine eighty percent of your profits. Well, you could just classify. I'm classifying those sort of things as outliers today, okay? And um, I'm going to show you how you, from a technical or or formula point of view, break out these things and then visualize them so that you can really dive into the drivers. So why are we getting the outliers? Where are they coming from? You know, all of the great analysis that you can do based on the subset of um, customers in this case. So I'm going to break out customers. Now, the other really, really amazing thing about this is it's dynamic. So if we have a look at uh, this, the report here, I'll just expand it. Now we can, and I do have the zooming working today as well. What we can do is we can zoom into any time frame here, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to zoom into any time frame and evaluate well what are the outliers for that time frame. And then what we can do with this is that we can see how our outliers change through time and the impact of our outliers change through time. And so, say for instance, we we might say start in um, say Q1 of 2016, and you'll see my entire report now uh, evaluates for that time frame. And you'll see here, based on this visualization here, I've broken out my outliers based on their sales and their margins. And I've got a, a, a different coloring, which enables me to easily identify, well, this is the, these are our customers that we are yeah, saying are our outlier customers. And then if I, as I move through time, you'll see how everything changes, but we can see, okay, well, this is our grouping of customers, which we consider outliers. And we can click through time, so on and so forth, and very quickly, analyze these these outliers so it's not only that we're breaking them out we're breaking out our, our customers in this case in a dynamic way okay and that's where the the i guess the advanced nature of our formulas come in because we have to uh, uh, i guess uh, contend with a, a number of different things depending on what a user might select in our report so what, uh, so what, what are some of the other features inside of here? Well, so we we can, um, show, you know, this is from a showcasing perspective. You'll see here that uh, I'm showcasing my outliers here. Well, I actually want to see, well, who are these customers? And that's what this table is here for. So say, for instance, I change timeframes. Well, we can very quickly identify through this list. Okay, well, these are these are our um, customers. These are their sales and these are, um, these are their margins. And then we can see through time, okay, well, uh, our outliers is this um, is this bottom portion here. So how much are our outliers making up um, or comparing to our non-outlier customers? And then I have a bit more information in terms of where where are our outlier customers purchasing? 
and we can select inside say the region that they're purchasing and see which customers they are you know and we're still just drilling into these outlier customers and that's why that's why this um your piece of analysis is so powerful because we're just isolating some specific um groupings of our um of, of our data okay so that's enough from me uh, I'm going to now show you how to do it. How, how do we do this? And, and within the simplicity of the visualization here, you have to realize there's actually quite a lot going on behind the scenes. And you'll see as I work through formula, uh, what, what, what is actually happening or how we're actually generating these results. Any questions up until this point that I can maybe showcase within this visualization? Let me know, let me know in the chat in the next, uh, in the next 10 seconds and, I, and I, I'll jump into them before I actually move into the, into the formula. Can, can you all imagine a scenario where you might yourselves want to break out some piece of, it, uh, of your data or, or subset of your data and then really drill into that specific aspect um, and being able to do it in a dynamic way? Um, <clears throat> hopefully you're, 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 a you're being able to imagine how you would do this in your mind now. So John has asked, <clears throat> um, is there some source code and data files that we can download? So, the um, you'll be you, uh, what I do is I give I give out the resource, uh, but if you want to um, data files, so demo data uh, per se is um, so I make that available to members, enterprise DNA members. So uh, there's an entire course module or module within Enterprise DNA Online where there's a you know, about forty different demo data sets, and those are the ones that I use for all of these examples. So if you do want the demo data sets. Uh, then um, you, if you remember, you can access it right, right, right now. Um, if not, you would have to upgrade to membership. But I do, I do hand out the resource, okay? So you can have a look at um, all of the calculations, et cetera, that, that go into this. Okay, so uh, let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at our model, okay? And I'll, and I'll run through the steps that we need to we need to go through all the different steps to actually able to achieve what, what I just showcased. Now, we have a very simple model. I'm not going to show you anything here. Uh, I don't want to um, spend any time here because I go through this in other courses that free or, or, or on YouTube on, on, on the Enterprise DNA uh, TV channel. Simple setup here though, right? This is just a, a, a generic sales organization. Uh, we are we are um, yep, just analyzing that and we're gonna we're gonna overlay this uh, logic on top of that. Now, the first thing that we need to realize though, okay, is how do we differentiate? So we're gonna we're gonna break out our outliers based on our customers, right? Now, if we come and have a look at the customer table, you'll see here. How do we actually differentiate between what is an outlier customer dynamically versus what is not a, an outlier customer? Because there's nothing in our table which suggests that, right? Nothing, absolutely nothing. So we need to be able to generate this, okay? Now, we need to be able to generate it based on some logic. So I'll show you what we can do already, right? So we can say we've got our customers here, and I just realized that I just need to. Um, so we've got, our, we've got our customers here, right? I've already generated a total sales measure and a profit, uh, profit margins measure. So I've demoed these many times, so I don't want to go, go over it right now. But you'll see here that we can we can look at what our customers are from a total sales perspective and a profit margins perspective. But we've got to realize that that is through time, right? This is, there's no date, uh, there's no, there's no date formula or there's no date context, sorry, um, over this particular table. So we're just looking at everything through time. If we did say, uh, place in some date context, then this would obviously change. All our results would change uh, like so. Okay. And so what we need to do is we need to somehow run some logic through a table that says when a specific date range is selected, we consider some of these customers outliers versus some of these customers non-outliers, right? Now, how do we do that? How do we do that? Now, I've showcased this before, so some of you may, may have seen it or heard of it, but we need to create some secondary table logic. We need to create a table that we evaluate over to decide if a particular customer, in this case, is an outlier or they are not. Okay, because we, the the actual, uh, uh, I guess, differentiation doesn't exist within our current data, so we need to create it with some logic. Okay, so how do we do that? Now, let me just let me just 
get my model on the side here. So we need to create a table. We need to create a table. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to create the table by going into data here. You see here, we can, we can actually generate tables just um, out of out of thin air just by writing in some information. So I'm going to do exactly that. And I'm going to call this table, I'm going to call this the um, outlier detection. Outlier detection. So I know I know some of you have some questions, but I'll, I'll have to come to those okay, because there's quite a lot I want to cover. So outlier detection logic. So we've got grouping here, and then this is where I'm going to create my group. So I'm going to go. I'm going to call my outlier group. I've got my outlier, and I've got my non-outlier. See, I'm, I'm creating these two groups, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go profit margins. And I'm going to place in the logic that I need to actually create this table. So I'm going to go profit margins max. And I'm going to go total salesman and total sales max. So I'm creating the logic that's going to break out. I'm creating the logic that is going to break out these outliers versus non outliers. And so I'm going to put 30% uh, in here. And then 100% in here, and 0 and 30% here. And then my total sales is going to be 10,000 and 50,000, 0 and 10,000. Now, why are we creating this table? Okay, well, based on, say, results that we receive, we want to then evaluate through this table and say, okay, well, is that customer's margins between the min here and the max here? And are there sales between the min here and the max here? And then if they are, then that's what we consider an outlier. Okay. And then the same can be said. The same can be said for our non-outlier. If they actually sit within the min max here, min max here, well, then that is what is going to be considered a non-outlier. Okay. So this is how we're going to break out in a dynamic way these particular um, customers. So then I'm going to go load. Okay. And then you'll see here, and this is why it's called a secondary table, because this table just sits out to the side. There's no relationship to our data model here. We're going to use this table to run a logic through, okay? And this is a technique that you can use in so many different ways, okay? So hopefully this is just sort of expanding your mind in terms of you know, what is just actually possible uh, within, within your models. Okay, so now what we need to do, now what we need to do, I'm just going to delete these ones. We need to, we need to somehow now create some logic which breaks out, which breaks out uh, our, our uh, visualization into this one here. Where we can actually say, okay, well, our outlier customers for this particular date context are sitting here and these are all our non-outlier customers. Okay, so well, what we are, uh, first, first of all, what I want to show there, first of all, what I want to show is I want to, uh, I want to first of all create an outlier um, an outlier calculations measure table. So I've showcased this many times, so this is very easy and quick to do. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we can now create uh, a, a calculation. So I'm going to create another measure here that uh, identifies those numbers that we just created in the table. Now, this is important, okay? So we can um, call this outlier sales min, okay? Now, if we have a look at this formula, what we're doing here is I'm calculating the min total sales, right? When the outlier detection uh, logic t column or the grouping column is outlier, okay? So I'll just go enter. And if I drag this into my table, you'll see that this is bringing up 10K. So remember in that table, the min, um, to, to be considered an outlier, the min amount of sales that a customer needed to have was 10,000. Okay, so that's me just breaking out that number. And then I'm going to create another measure that does that for the same thing for margins. So I'm going to go outlier margins min. Okay. 
and just make sure I got this right. You see how I'm doing exactly the same, and I'm working out, okay, well, what is the min profit margin when uh, uh, our uh, outlier detection logic grouping column is outlier? Okay, so I'll do that. And then, so there's a bit of setup here, as, you, as you're, as you I'm sure, finding out. But once we set it up, it's actually quite smooth sailing from here, okay? And you'll see why, you'll, you'll very quickly understand why we have to do this. Okay, so... Okay, so a bit of fix up there. Now, why have I created these calculations? Well, if you think about it, we need to somehow in a dynamic way showcase our customers who are, have an outlier sales at any, at any um, selection who have a sales minimum of 10,000 and an out, a margin minimum of 30%. Now, being able to break out these calculations like so enables us now to run some logic over them, which is really, really exciting, okay? And we can then say, okay, well, if a customer has um, ticks both these boxes or, or or is above both of these trigger points, well, then they are considered an outlier. If they're not, if they're below either of them, then they are considered a non-outlier. Okay, so check this out. Check this out. So we'll just um, we'll just mock it up in a simple table. Now, many of you will will know this, but I have a big recommendation to always always try and get some of these more complex calculations inside inside of tables so that you can actually work through the logic in your mind a lot in a lot in a lot clearer way okay so what are we doing now what are we doing now we need to i'm going to create a calculation which calculates if a customer is an outlier okay i'm going to go and call this one outlier sales Now this is where this is where the advanced formula starts coming in. So hopefully most of you had exposure to calculate. What does calculate do? Calculate enables you to change the context of the calculation. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I want to calculate up total sales, right? But I only want to calculate up sales in this case for customers who are deemed outliers, right? Because we're calculating outlier sales. So I'm going to uh, place a filter. I'm going to go filter. And in this case, I'm going to go customers. I'm going to go values customers. Because what we want to do in this case is we want to calculate what of our, we only want to, um, uh, we, we want a context to remain only for customers who are deemed outliers. And so then we need to go and go to calculate total sales. Is it greater than or equal to the outlier? So check this out, the outlier sales min. So we're incorporating quite a bit of logic in here. And is profit margins, our profit margin greater than or equal to the outlier margin min? Okay. So is it, hopefully everyone, everyone's with me. There's a, there's a little bit that's going on in here, but just think about what, what we're trying to do inside of Calculate. Calculate enables us to change the context of the calculation. And so what we're doing here is we're evaluating every single customer and we're saying, well, is this particular customer's sales greater than the salesman, which is this number here, and is their profit margins greater than this number here? Now, if I go OK, and I'll um, go and find this formula here, Um, and then what I want to do, and that's not actually calculating correctly. Give me a second. Oh, I know one. I know one. And then what we're going to do, I'll, I'll just calculate another one. I'll go non outlier sales. I'll, I'll bring in another formula. I'll show you how I would prefer to write this, okay? So I'm going to go new measure. A new measure here. I'll show you what I'm actually doing with this measure, this, this calculation here. So instead of instead of evaluating these new measures that I've created, I'm actually going to put them inside of variables, okay? And so you see here, these variables are basically just counting up exactly what I put into these measures. And then I've put them inside of um, this particular uh, this particular um, part of filter here, okay? And I just want to get rid of these for now because I'll show you why I incorporate these in a second. Now, 
Now you'll see the one other big difference here is this, you'll see these, these double lines here. This actually means, this actually means or, right? Because a non-outlier customer in our particular case is someone who has sales less than the sales min or is less than the margin min, okay? So I'll just calculate that and bring it into my table. And so you see now, you see how that is now broken up. And so we are seeing, okay, well, these are these are these are who we consider outlier customers, and these who we who we consider as non-outlier customers. Okay, so now I know why I know why this table was a bit longer than it, than it than it should have been. Because what we want to do is we want to break down this number a little bit. So I'm going to bring in some filters here. So check this out, check this out. So I actually determined those um, those sales levels based on, say, quarterly sales. And so I'm going to bring in my quarters. And so if I go 2016 quarter two, you'll see that the non-outlier amount is, is a lot bigger than, say, the the out the outlier column because now the, uh, the the sales amount is a lot less because it's actually contracted only to a particular quarter. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to change this into a scatter plot. Um, and I'll just make sure I got this set up right. Now we need to do one other formula, one other formula here, because at the moment, at the moment, uh, I'll, I'll come to your questions in one second, everyone, okay? So just bear with me one second. At the moment, there is no way to uh, bring in this particular column here, this grouping column, because what we want to do is we want to have a legend which breaks out the outliers and the non-outliers. So what we need to do is we do, need to do one other formula here, and I'll show you what this formula is in, uh, in one second. So this formula is called the sales grouping formula, okay? And so what it's doing is saying, well, if, if whatever is selected, the outlier detection logic grouping is an outlier, then return outlier sales. If not, return non-outlier sales, okay? So check out what this does. Check out what this does when I, um, when I uh, add, add, add this formula to this particular um, to this particular um, visualization. So I'm going to bring this sales grouping into here. And then I'm going to bring my profit margins into here. And you'll see very quickly, so I'll change the, uh, I'll go fill point. And so you see here now, you can see that there's a, there's a breakout in terms of uh, in terms of the results. So I'll just get the colors good. So you see here, we always are now breaking out our non-outlier and outlier sales. And you'll see that I'll change the time frame here, I'll change the time frame, and it will always dynamically only bring those particular clients in this, in this visualization. So pretty powerful stuff, right? So now I can go to any time selection and it will always only show me those particular outlier sales. Okay, so what do you think? What do you think? Look, there was a bit there. There's a bit there, and as I said right at the start, this, this is quite an advanced. Um, this is quite an advanced workshop because I just love showing advanced stuff. But you see, like this is hopefully you can see a very, very powerful insight. We can always, at any point in time, evaluate well who are our outlier sales based on any time selection we now make, and it will always break out these particular customers. Okay, so let me know what you think in the chat as I work through just some of these questions, okay? And I'll come back to ones that aren't as um, um, aren't relevant to what we're talking about uh, based on, um, yeah, I'll come back to those at the end, okay? So, um, so Vicky said, by creating the table with the outlier uh, criteria, you are pre-deciding what is an outlier, not based on any statistical analysis of actual results. Well, yes, um, we are predetermining uh, what it is, but you could you could also you got to remember that this you could also make it dy even that dynamic, right? But say for instance, you know, say for instance, you're a bank, right, and you have some credit criteria that uh, suggests if a customer has um, is uh, uh, you know sort of like in trouble or not in trouble, right? Well, a lot of those criteria are going to be set 
And so that's exactly kind of what this technique is showcasing, is you can actually set some trigger points, you can set some values, and then if at any period of time that you select someone is outside of those values, well then you would then determine them an outlier, you, you might have something that you need to follow up on, or you might need to have some sort of discussion. Those are the, those are the, those are the powerful things that you can actually create um, from, uh, from, from doing something like that, or, or, or having predetermined amounts. Okay, so, um, so we, we are predetermining what is deemed an outlier. So, so, so Sock, you're saying um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pre-deciding versus dynamic as well. But the thing is, is that it's dynamic in terms of we change to any time frame and the evaluation still occurs based on those particular, particular parameters. Now, you, as I say, you could easily also make that dynamic, okay? So there's, there's, there's no reason why you can't, but um, that, I think, would have taken things up to another level um, for this session, which, which, which I probably um, felt didn't, didn't, it didn't require. Okay, so he's saying uh, fits in line with the cluster demo. Yeah, so look, there's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of techniques combined, actually, that, uh, that have, um, have, have been included, that I've showcased before, that are included in, in some of the techniques that I'm running through today. Okay, so, so Trevor's asked, um, is there a technique to handle the comparison of sales versus fractional time periods? Um, percent is unaffected, but uh, look, look, honestly, um, so Trevor, I'm, I'm reading through your question. Look, there probably is, just not something I can um, uh, probably think of and showcase just off the cuff, but there, I'm 100% I'm um, sure that there, there is. As I say, you can make, so you think about, think about this number here. So think about this number that, that I'll drill into, I'll drill into here, right? Well, this isn't a measure, right? There's no reason why this measure cannot be any number or any dynamic number that you generate based on the time frame that you have selected. Okay, so, um, so, so, so certainly don't feel like it needs to be static. But this is just how I've set it up, just based on many scenarios that um, I, I would uh, see out there that I'm very sure that you would see. Say, for instance, you know, you're, you're a manufacturing plant. Well, you would, you would ha maybe have some. Um, some areas or, or you would you would produce some goods right and you would say okay well there would be some set criteria if a good was good enough versus not good enough to actually be sent out to a customer or something like that well that that, that again is a scenario where you're going to have some sort of set parameters and where this uh, this sort of analysis is going to be very relevant okay so that's probably that's probably um that's probably all i'll uh i'll I'll talk about on this point. Now we need to we need to do a little bit more here. Okay, we need to do a little, little bit more in terms of the setup. And I'm just going to go through the techniques um, and show you how how you do it. And um, and and then look, you can um, you can review the the resource because I think I'm probably going to run out of a bit of time to showcase everything. Now, what I want to do is I want to dive deeper into these outliers. Right, I want to see who are these particular customers, who are they. I want to see how things trend over time, non-outliers versus outlier customers. And then I want to also break it down per, per state. And I, want, I really want to drill into these customers. That's basically the answer I want to um, come up with. So we, how do we do it? How do we do it? Now, we need to just add a little bit more logic in here, okay, uh, than, than we already have. We're not, we're not far away. We're not far away. Because if you think about it, what we can do is we can create a table. Um, I'm just going to change the style to just no um, colors there. We can create a table. I've already got outlier sales here, right? And so you see here that this uh, this this column this column updates for again any selection that we make. You'll see that it is dynamic and it will change the amount the the customer list will change because this um, who we deem as outliers is changing as well. We can also create a, a similar one for margins. So I'm just copying and pasting from my example here. So you see here that this is a, this is a similar. Um, this is exactly this is exactly the same formula. Exactly the same formula. There's a little bit more logic in here, which I'll which I'll I'll come to in a moment. But basically, we're we're determining is this customer an outlier, and then instead of sales, we're actually showcasing margins instead. Okay, and then so if I then bring this into the table, if I then bring this into my table, 
you'll see that we're only looking at the margins of the of those particular customers, right? And so it's only going to showcase these light colored, these light colored customers at all times, okay? And so we're not look, we're not looking at any of these other customers. We're only looking at these particular customers in here. And so I can change to quarter three. Everything will update, um, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, check out check out the um, issue that we have. Check out some of the issues that we have when we look at this on different context, right? So I'm going to bring in my date uh, date column here, and I want to create a visualization. I want to create a visualization. So you see here that I've got total sales, right? I've got total sales here. Now, I want to look at outlier sales, okay? I want to look at outlier sales and compare how they're going versus non-outlier sales. Now, I'll bring this in. You'll see outlier sales. And you'll see that I get this. All I get, all I get is this dot. All I get is this dot here, right? So it's actually not returning anything. Um, uh, it's not returning the correct result. I'm going to bring a non-outlier as well, and you'll see that this non-outlier, it, it literally just brings this little line. Can anyone think why this is? Can anyone think why this is? Why is it returning only these values? It's, it's, it's incorrect. It's not what we want. It's not what we want. And let's have a look at the formula. Let's have a look at the formula. And this is this is this is probably the hardest thing of this session. Okay, this is the the trickiest thing of the session, and 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 possibly you know one of the um, the key things, or key takeaways of how you can apply this to your own data. And this is where um, understanding outliers becomes a little bit tougher. Okay, so Eric has got it right. So Eric's written in the chat the date filter. Now what's happening? What's happening is. Um, yeah, so some, some of you have got it, right? Some of you have got it. What is happening is that this, this total sales amount is, is you see here, we're, we're trying to evaluate, uh, is total sales greater than or equal to the outlier sales min, right? And we're trying to say, was a profit margin is greater than the outlier margin min? The problem is when we, when we, look, at, we, we look at this from a um, chart, a, a time perspective is that that total sales amount is getting filtered for every single day and so it's a much smaller amount versus this amount which is only filtered so you see here these outlier sales amounts these are only filtered for the year and the quarter so they are actually the um, correct amount based on the the outlier logic that we had in that table but this one is different because every single day total sales is getting filtered and there's a much smaller amount so how do you think we solve it? Anyone, you know, before I showcase it, anyone got any ideas of how you actually solve it? So what we need to do is we need to change that total sales calculation. We need to internally change the context of that calculation. This is really powerful stuff, okay? So really, really powerful stuff. So if it doesn't, it's not making sense, um, you want it to. That's all I will say, okay? You will want it to make se uh, sense. Uh, eventually, okay. So I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm show you. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So you see here that this is exactly the same calculation. Nothing is different in this um, formula bar up here. Nothing is different here. What is different is here, okay. Let's just have a look at this portion here. What we need to do is we need to forget about in this in this particular case in this visualization. We need to forget about the dates context and to do that or to remove it we need to use all selected dates. Now, a lot of you would have used all selected in the cumulative total pattern. Well, this is this is very, very similar. We need to um, uh, uh, remove the date context only within this particular, only within this particular visualization. We still want the date context from our filters or slices, but only, uh, but not from this particular table. Okay, so I'll push OK, and I'll zoom out, and I'll add this, you'll see I'll add this. And you see now that we actually have a result that uh, that down the down the bottom. So I'll get I'll get rid of these other ones. And so now we can we can look at our total sales versus our outlier sales. And I'm going to do exactly the same for our non-outliers. I'll just and paste this in. If 
I just did exactly the same for the non-outliers, but you'll see here, you'll see here the only difference again is this or logic instead of if logic. So you just have to change that around. And I'll drag that in. And you'll see then that now we're actually getting the, the non-outlier custom as well. And then we can start showcasing those together. So that's pretty powerful, right? Because again, we're seeing how our non-outliers versus our outliers change through time, but it's based on the correct logic, and that's the, that's the cool thing. And so again, we can change the time frame, and that's always going to break that out depending on, um, you know, depending on, on, on well, it's, it's calculating the correct logic. It's evaluating through the correct logic um, across our secondary table. Okay, so that's that's the technique I wanted to show there. So Nicola, you're saying would it work with all except? Um, I don't think it would in this particular case. I would probably have to test it, but all selected works fine. So I'll just use all selected. Um, that's probably mm, no. You, you probably could actually. You probably could. I'd have I'd have to test to just um, to, to to make double sure. But all selected works absolutely fine and does exactly what we want in this case. Okay. So that's all I wanted to show there. So how, how are we going so far? I know, like as I say, as I say, this was this is a, this is quite an advanced um, this is quite an advanced uh, session. But you'll see here that this is how this is how we really drill into these specific customers and understanding understanding what's why we're getting these customers and how they're trending over time. So Trevor's saying it's not uh, not all soaking into, uh, into into your brain. Look, I I wouldn't be too worried about that because some of this some of the stuff like I was, I'll, I'll 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 certainly say it takes a little while to sink in. It takes a little while to sink in, especially around context. But as you get more advanced in Power BI, it's all about context. It's all about understanding the context. That's how you create really or generate really incredible insights. So. Forget about, just, just as a recommendation for this particular formula, forget about this for the second. That is, this is in there for a particular reason, but we haven't got to that point yet. Only focus in on this particular part here. Everything is exactly the same in our formula, except for this part here. Remember, we are evaluating our outlier based on quarterly logic, not on daily logic. And what happens when you place this into a um, visualization like here, this is actually on a daily perspective because the filters are occurring at every single day. And so we do want to see what the total sales is for every single one of those days, but we only want to see it for customers, for customers that we deem outliers based on the quarterly logic. And then so within this calculation, that's why we need to break out or forget about the daily context and only worry about the quarterly context. So that's what. Uh, so, so, so that is what that is specifically doing. So Philip is asking why do why do the year and quarter filters still work in the second chart? What am I missing? So the reason they still work is because all selected only works on I believe it's called the inner context. The inner context in this particular case is uh, the date, right? It is the date. So maybe if I turn this into a table, that might be helpful. So I'll turn this into a table. Yes, it's, so Philip, you've answered your you've answered your question. It's because of all selected, right? So you see here that this date, this date context is being filtered at every single day, right? But if all selected removes it removes this particular context and only uh, and only evaluates well, it, it, but it retains this context, it retains the slicer context, and so that's very similar to um, this is that's very similar to say a cumulative total pattern. Okay, so I'm going to skip a little bit here. I'm going to skip a little bit. I probably just want to show you a couple of other things because I'll, I'll give you the resource and I do want to open up um, for some questions. Hopefully, hopefully you're all still with me. I love showcasing this advanced stuff, as, as, as most of you are aware. You know, this is this is the true power behind Power BI, right? This is the analytical stuff that is going to really make a difference. And so that's 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 truly my focus. That's what I want to uh, make sure, you know, you, you are empowered to do yourselves. Now, I want to show you one uh, one other point. I want to show you one other thing, one other thing uh, before 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 maybe I'll, I'll, I'll wrap things up. Now, what I want to do is I also want to drill into what are these customers, what are these customers buying uh, and where are they buying them from? So like what regions are they buying them in? Again, this is us really drilling into into you know, what's actually causing these outliers or, 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 or what these outlier uh, customers are doing, okay? 
So what I want to do is I want to go and grab, I want to go and grab my, uh, I'm going to grab my state code in this case. I'm going to bring this into a table down here. Okay, and then what I want to do, what I want to do is check this out, check this out. I'm going to create another measure here. I'm going to create another measure. Zoom in. Now, again, all of this stuff is the same, okay? So don't you know, to be too focused on that. It's the same thing. All it's doing is it's um, saying 10,000 and 30%. That's basically what this these variables are calculating, right? Now, what are we doing in here? This is, again, all about context, right? It's all about context. Now, we want to, we want to evaluate or we want to see the total sales of only, only our outlier um, our outlier customers, right? Only our outlier customers. So if I uh, go and uh, grab this inside of here and I compare it to my total sales. So, so some of you, so some of you may have, um, may, may have identified. So I think Vicky, you, uh, you're saying um, you might have answered it. Just give me, just give me one second while I so. Okay, so what we need to do here, right? What we need to do here. So you see here that again, we have a filter. We have a filter being placed on our state code. Now, if we did not, if we did not have uh, this part incorporated in, in our formula, this total sales is going to have that filter uh, incorporated into it, and it's going to reduce the number. It's going to reduce the the the, the sales per customer, right? Because we, we want to see this total sales of all of our customers deemed outliers, but we need to make sure that this total sales and this profit number is not determined uh, or is not changed by any additional filter that is being um, that is being placed over it inside of here, and in this case, the state code. And so to remove that filter within, within here, we need to place an all, right? We need to place an all to remove it, and then that is going to make sure that we evaluate the outlier customers based on everything okay based on all of our um all of our uh, data set not just that particular not just filtered for that particular state or any particular state okay and then so then this is actually then showing us a visualization it is showing us a visualization of only of only the regions which have had sales from outlier customers right and so if we look at, and to double check this, to double check this, I'll show you how we can double check it. If I turn this into a table, you will see, let's have a look at the totals. Let's have a look at the total numbers. You'll see here that the total is 458660, and the total here is 458660. So we know that these are our outlier customers, and these are where our outlier customers bought all of our products, and these are the sales that they made uh, in those particular regions. Okay, so with uh, Vicky's asked a good question, Spuzzy. So I just want to dive into that, okay? So hopefully, hopefully this, is, this is somewhat sinking in. So Vicky's asked, so how would you show which customers moved into the outlier group over time? It's a very good question, Vicky. Um, it would be good to know who were in one category versus who were in another. Now that is a really good question, and it's very doable. It's very, very doable, <laughs> but it's not that easy, and I, I probably would need a little bit more time. How you would do it? How you would do it is via the intersect, using the intersect function, okay? The intersect function. So what we could probably do, just let me, um, I don't want to go into something and then spend 15 minutes on it. That's the on, my only concern. Um, so what I'll say to that, Vicky, Vicky, it is so possible, and I'm going to end, and, and I love I love uh, the idea, right? But what I'll do is I will, um, I will create a video of this in time uh, over the next week or so, and I'll show you how you can how 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 it works. Okay, I just want to do a bit of testing myself um, before uh, just to make sure I've got it right. Um, but that is a really really cool um, application and uh, really really powerful insight. So <clears throat> sorry I can't show it right now, but I'll, I'll I definitely will show that in time. Okay, so things have gone out a little bit longer, and I think, I think I've covered the core things that I wanted to cover. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back into the demo model. And so you'll obviously get be able to get a hold of this. And everything is um, 
so I'll show you, I'll show you. So you see here on the on the side, <clears throat> all of these, all of these formulas are, are neatly packed into this outlier calculations uh, measure group, right? And so you can review all of these formulas, see how see how they are generated because they've all got slight adjustments based on um, based on the context in which they are in. And I think in terms of an um, all-encompassing solution, this is this is this is pretty powerful stuff. Um, we can also, in this case, you know, we can actually drill into our outliers here, and you can say jump into um, a visualization like this, and then maybe you want to actually uh, view uh, who the who these particular customers are, and so you can very quickly do that as well. So another way that you can utilize this um, uh, this uh, many of these techniques, I guess, in, in terms of your visualizations. Okay, so bear with me. I'm going to switch back to me, and then um, I'm going to. I'm going to. Does anyone have any questions? Anyone have any other questions that I'll that I can touch on in the next five minutes, and then I'm going to open it up into uh, into just general questions, um, and 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 maybe just have a, a bit more of a chat around um, enterprise DNA. <clears throat> so the the example that the the example that um, the example that Vicky mentioned. Uh, is, is 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 seriously amazing. So I, I really look forward to to showcasing that, and and maybe I will um maybe maybe one of the one of the next workshops I'll show that as well. And so um, Mike's asked, can you download it? I uh, guess you. Can, yeah, I'll I'll be sending it out to you. So don't worry. I'll 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 send out the resource so you can see everything that is in uh, is in, is incorporated into the into the um into the logic into the report into the model. I always do that. Can anyone think how you could take this further, or was there anything that I, I maybe missed that you know maybe maybe would 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 be a good piece of analysis as well? Does anyone have any questions on enterprise DNA? The offering for some enterprise DNA. You know, uh, I know a lot of you are already members, but um, if you do want to. If you do want to uh, access a lot of the the training materials, um, demo models, other demo models, demo data, um, you know, a significant amount of uh, course material and, and tutorials, then then certainly look into membership. Membership is is is, is the is basically the only offering from Enterprise DNA, uh, and uh, and and there's there's some some really exciting things coming uh, soon on that in terms of member only trainings and uh, and and around um, some ongoing support. So I've got a question. Maybe we could try and figure out what should be the criteria to define an outlier. Yeah. So look, there there might be uh, there might be a scenario where you you want to create your um, outliers to be a bit more dynamic, or you want to actually run some cat. You you might want to actually run some calculations instead of just putting a static number in like I did. Maybe you actually want to generate that table via some formula based on um, based on some uh, based on some uh, some logic that sits in the, within your data. Maybe you want to break out, say, top twenty percent on from the sales and top twenty percent on the margins on your margins, and then that would be your, you know, that would be your outline. So, um, uh, questions, questions, questions. So we have. Um, so Jeff asks, do you do company specific training? So, so Jeff, um, if, if you're asking that, uh, do I do? Just trainings for companies, then uh, absolutely yes. So in-house trainings. Uh, obviously, I'm based in New Zealand, so uh, I can do, I can travel to things and in, in locally. Um, but I also do virtual sessions as well. If you want to um, have a, a much deep dive, a much deeper dive session, or you want um, some customized training uh, for corporates, then I, I do do that. So if you do want to explore that further, then just just shoot me an email. Um, so I've got a question around monthly memberships. So uh, that is something I'm I'm looking at uh, in terms of a monthly subscription. So so certainly watch out for that. Okay, um, I'm I'm having a really good think about that um, uh, and going to do I'm going to offer um, do potentially a trial around that shortly. So uh, if you are interested in that, just just send me an email. Okay, um, maybe you can get um, onto the onto the trial um, onto the trial uh, that, that I'm going to run on it. Um, so can you describe how the training works and what else is included? Um, do you kind of uh, progressively walk us through all the formulas? So Trevor's asked just a bit more about um, 
the the training uh, through from an enterprise DNA membership. Well, um, there's 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 a lot there, Trevor. So there's some there's some free learning. So hopefully you've taken the ultimate beginner's guide to Power BI and, and DAX. There's also uh, a, a range of structured learning. So this is where we actually walk, walk through you know, very specific parts of Power BI. So there's a Power BI workshop. There's also an, an entire course on on DAX. So that's where I run through all of the formulas uh, individually and show you how to use them uh, in a in a practical way. And then there's there's I focus in on say a mod, there's a modeling and, and vis, uh, modeling uh, module a visualization data visualization module uh, and there's a scenario analysis module advanced analytics module so this is it's all the, the structured learning more detailed learning uh, and then also there's uh, these uh, a new series and I'm bringing out called a mini series and that's where I break down all these really individual uh, topics uh, and do sort of uh, five to ten minute videos uh, and um, those, those are, that is going to be an exciting development um, throughout the course of the next few months and as, as I roll that out um, because they'll be much more niche about uh, very niche topics like like I guess like today. Um, but if you have any further questions on that, Trevor, don't don't hesitate uh, to. Uh, shoot me an email, happy to explain anything around the training, and that's to anyone out there um, uh, that uh, that you might, any question, I'm happy happy to help out, or, or happy to explain further. Um, so, uh, so Nicolay is saying, uh, what if I try some dynamic analysis for dynamic outliers? Yep, so Nicolay, um, absolutely, you can do that, okay, so uh, as, as I've mentioned. Okay, I think that's all. Um, that's all I've got. Uh, that's that's all the questions. Sorry, I'm not going to this. I'm just looking at the chat. Um, I think what I might do. We've gone for we've gone for almost an hour. Is it, uh, last last call on questions. Last call on questions. Um, thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks a lot. Really good. Um, really good show. Uh, really appreciate you coming along. Um, the, these sessions, um, I think, are, 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 are becoming you know. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you find them very informative that's that's the idea um they are about very niche topics as i've mentioned and and that's what i like to showcase because um that's quite unique out there you know i don't i don't want to just um talk about the same things every single time you know how to build dashboards and how to build reports etc this is it's all about how you can uh how you can use some really unique analytical techniques to create really valuable insights, so that's um, that's always going to be the focus, and will continue to be the focus of these sessions. So, so hopefully, um, and based on the feedback I've got, that's you know that's that's certainly well received. So, hopefully, um, you enjoyed you enjoyed this this one as well. Watch out for an email from me, and in a little while, in, in an hour or so, I'll um, have the replay and also the resource all set up for you. Um, so, so certainly review that in time. If you've got any questions around um, around any of the I guess training content resources from Enterprise DNA, uh, then certainly reach out via email. Happy to happy to chat about those. Happy to um, talk you through uh, any, any any of those um, offerings. You know because there's a lot there. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thanks, thank you very much for for coming. Um, really appreciate all the feedback I get about these sessions. Um, yeah, it's. It's, uh, I really enjoy putting them on. It's really, really great to talk about some of these, um, some of these amazing analytical features that we have available um, to us with Power BI. So hopefully you can look to implement these in your own models as, as soon as you can. Okay, signing off. All the very best, and uh, I look forward to uh, the next session and talking to you soon. Cheers.